Good day and welcome to our next lesson class. But before we will start with our next lesson, uh, let's have a recap with our previous topic, which is um, requirements engineering. So when we say requirements engineering, it is a broad range of tasks and techniques like collecting, processing, and managing of user requirements. Um, you also, I believe that I already mentioned, and also you've noticed that some of the tasks mentioned in the requirements engineering fall in both communication and modeling activities. Hopefully, um, you have gained insights on our last discussion on how we will collect user requirements for your software engineering project. And because of that, I would like to congratulate you all. Okay. Um, normally, uh, when we say planning activity, um, it should follow after the communication. In the planning activity, uh, this is where the team will create a software project plan that defines the software engineering work by describing the technical tasks to, to be conducted, um, the risks that are likely, the resources that will be required, the work products, or basically that is the software or the system to be produced, and also the, work, the working schedule. I also believe that I wa uh, um, it was mentioned in the Agile processes about the release planning and iteration planning for extreme programming. Also in Scrum, um, we have sprint planning, right? Um, these activities, by the way, will fall under the planning activity. Um, we will not go deeper um, into budgeting and scheduling because that topics uh, will be discussed in your Kansai 165, uh, which is the project management. And also to tell you honestly, uh, we removed some topics in software engineering so that uh, makaya lang ang 14 weeks. So if you will ask us, um, the Kansai 165, the project management is not a repetition of our software engineering subject this semester um, because in project management, it focuses more on the project manager's tasks in which ang sa software engineering, it's more on the software engineers. Okay? Sorry, but we need to skip planning for now. Okay? So we will proceed to modeling. So from this moment, uh, we will proceed to the next activity in the process model, which is the modeling. Um, given everything that was connected during communication and planning, um, this time, the software engineers analyzes this and, and also they present this data um, through the use of modeling tools that will also lead the design of the software. So basically, in this phase, both modeling and designing activity will happen. Uh, we have already introduced requirements modeling in the previous lesson on requirements engineering as a task to organize and validate requirements. Basically, for the requirements modeling, um, it's, it is also called as specs or specifications. Okay? Uh, also, these are created in the modeling phase through a task that is, uh, that is referred to as a requirements modeling. Next one. Uh, requirements modeling uses a combination of text and diag um, diagrammatic um, forms to depict requirements in a way that it is relatively easy to understand and straightforward to review for correctness, completeness, and also the consistency. Um, during requirements modeling, um, the business analyst um, analyzes um, the collected information from interviews, sample reports, memos, user workshops, or other documentation in order to identify what the user needs. Um, the analysis report uh, results in the specification of the software's operational characteristics, possible interfaces with other systems, and establishes constraints that the software must meet. 
Um, for groups or teams that have nanai clients, this is one of your benefits because just like what I said, um, you can directly ask for immediate feedback or request from them so that you can incorporate it to your system. However, for those teams or groups who don't have clients, it would be better if you will look for a reliable sources of data. For example, your system is in the hospital management sector in a specific LGU. So you need to look for a, reli a reliable sources in the internet about how the other countries utilize technology to manage cases or illnesses in their respective hospitals. And also, um, it is also good if you will read some articles, news, or any blogs about how people react to the computer-based applications they used in their country. One good suggestion for you is to, uh, for you to get a good user stories, is that you need to uh, you need to empathize your target users' feelings. We need also to place ourselves in their shoes. Um, take note about uh, take note what um, about what I said in our last discussion. Um, communication is the key. So once you have identified your user stories. We can now use this user stories to design the software. What I'm trying to draw here is that the analyst must model what is known and use that model as basis for design. Next. Also, in, um, in this topic, which is in requirements modeling, we use tools to represent user requirements so that it becomes easy to understand for both customers and developers or software engineers. As mentioned in the previous lesson, the models are used as a means to um, validate the user requirements and a basis for establishing software design. In a nutshell, the requirements model must achieve three primary objectives. First, to describe what the customer requires. Second, to establish a basis for the creation of the software design. And lastly, to define a set of requirements that can be validated once the software is built.